lips with a mouth-watering sheen. Indulge yourself with Max Factor's new lipsticks, the Sweet Young In this Cream. video, you're going to see cream. some of the best beauty secrets from the 1970s that gave us icons like Farrah Fawcett. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura, and in this video, I'm going to show you some of the best beauty secrets from the 1970s. But these tips are still as relevant today as they were back then. So sit back and relax while I take you on a trip down memory lane to the decade that gave us Farrah Fawcett. The 1970s were a dynamic era for American pop culture with the introduction of many beloved entertainment staples that continue to influence us to this day. During this time, iconic TV genres like sitcoms, game shows, and variety specials joined the public imagination. Classic films like The Godfather and Jaws saw widespread acclaim and popularity. Rock music retained its dominance with bands like Led Zeppelin, Captain Activating new generations, and artistry flourished in an increasingly vibrant hip hop scene. In 1970s American pop culture formed a dazzling collage of contemporary trends from all sorts of disciplines, leaving behind an incredible mark on our culture for decades to come. The 1970s were a wild and revolutionary time in the beauty industry. As a result, 1970s fashion trends in terms of women's beauty were characterized by an array of daring choices that many considered to be a statement of freedom and rebellion. 1970s styles included vast amounts of big hair, jumpsuits, platform shoes, and shimmering eye makeup. It was certainly a far cry from the more subtle looks popularized today. Women embraced these basic aesthetic statements as an expression of their independence and individuality, breaking out of traditional gender roles in the fast fascinating decade that followed. Similar to the 1960s, the 1970s were a turbulent decade. As protests and unrest didn't stop with the start of the new decade, the decade was in some respects seen as a continuation of the 1960s. While many Americans joined the protests against the ongoing war in Vietnam, many marginalized people persisted in their battle for equality. It might be claimed that while Americans pursued individualism through new perspectives on religion, traditional values, and popular culture, personal liberty and revolt against authority became the primary themes of the 70s. And now let's look at some beauty routines of the 1970s. Women in the 70s were already nourishing their skin with cleansers, exfoliating soaps, toners, and moisturizers after the introduction of multi-step skincare routines in the 1960s. The market for skincare was stimulated by the the increase in consumer demand, which led to the emergence and success of numerous brands. The few timeless products, including Pond's Cold Cream, Erno Laszlo, and Oil of Olay continue to be the gold standard for both regular ladies and famous people like Barbara Streisand and Diane Keaton and Yoko Ono. Biologique Recherche, a French skincare line developed by scientist Yvan Alouche to help women of all ages attain beautiful skin was another brand that spread like a wild fire throughout Europe in the late 1970s and is still widely popular today. Although the business's renowned lotion P50 in 1970 is still available in the United States and is tragically outlawed in Europe because it contained phenol, forcing the company to develop a slightly altered version without the contentious ingredient. Also, the importance of anti-aging products increased, and women with acne-prone and troubled skin were advised to use retinol. The Sun Protection Factor SPF rating system, which is still in use today, was first introduced in the 1970s. Dermatologists began noticing the skin damage done to the sun worshippers of the 1930s and 40s as news of the harm sunbathing made due to skin began to spread via the media. The beauty sector responded by developing tanning creams with increased UV protection as well as items to prevent sun damage. Unfortunately, many people chose to disregard the warnings and continued sunbathing 
carelessly, despite being aware of the risks associated with excessive tanning or the ties to cancer. And now let's look at some makeup trends of the 1970s. The sophisticated lady of the 1970s was reflected in Western cosmetic and makeup trends of the period. For the first time since 1900, women were free to choose their cosmetics based on their mood and unique preferences, even though some aspects like a tanned and glowy appearance were deemed fashionable and desired. The daytime natural appearance, which was influenced by feminists, and the evening aesthetic, which was exhibited by European designers and fashion photographers, were the two main visions of the time. Punk and glam were two other subcultures that had a significant impact in the 1970s. Having a sheen or iridescent glow to the skin was quite fashionable and a part of the natural young look when it comes to foundation and other complexion products. Women utilized extremely light foundation shimmers on the cheekbones and heavy moisturizers to get this look covering up flaws but not necessarily hiding them. I feel like this is the today's version of the no makeup look kind of like the like lightweight dewy minimal makeup. Many women avoided using heavy foundation especially during the hot summer months because it was unpopular especially for a daytime appearance. Blush and bronzer, two additional complexion accents that were widely utilized to produce a warm, tanned, and bronzy appearance were also quite popular in the 1970s. A darker variation of a natural blush, such as a vivid peach or raspberry stain, was in vogue as a blush hue. Women utilized pastel makeup in hues including blue, green, and violet to create an eye appearance. The use of pearlescent or iridescent whites and silver behind the brow to give highlight was also common, as were earthy tones. Eye crayons were also offered, though they weren't particularly common until worn for a nighttime or punk look. There were no sharp edges or deep shadows. Everything was blended, smooth, and shimmering. In the 1970s, thinner eyebrows also made a reappearance because ladies frequently plucked them extremely thin and in a curve. Although small, clean brows were the standard, many people also favored somewhat fuller arched brows. Last but not least, glossy lip glosses with a gorgeous shine were far more popular in the 1970s than deep fruity lip colors like plum, mulberry, and cranberry. Art Deco, Mary Quant, and Revlon were well-known makeup companies that later bought off smaller companies like Max Factor, Elizabeth Arden, and Helena Rubinstein. In order to compete with mega firms, independent businesswomen like Madeline Mono, Suzanne Grayson, and Adrian Arpel founded modest customer focused businesses. And now let's look at manicures in the 1970s. Long artificial nails were popular during the 70s, especially among those who could afford to regularly maintain them by going to nail salons. Traditionally, square nails were used to manicure hands, but Cher may have had something to do with this trend. One American man met the high demand in 1975 in Hollywood for a natural nail look that actresses could wear with any article of clothing. A basic natural nail design consisting of soft pink nails with white tips was invented by Jeff Pink, the creator of the nail lacquer and treatment brand Orly, and it quickly took over the fashion runways and beauty industry. Everyone desired the French manicure as soon as the trend hit the Parisian runways. And now let's look at some of the popular hairstyles of the 1970s. As every other decade, the 1970s saw its share of celebrity and film influences on hairstyles. With her exquisite feathery layers and large flipped sides, Farrah Fawcett had a significant influence on late 1970s hair. The shag, which is used by Jane Fonda in the movie Clute, and is credited to renowned hairstylists Paul McGregor and The Wedge, which was notably developed by British hairstylist Trevor Sorby in 1974, were two other popular haircuts from the decade. Afros were among the most popular hairstyles of the 70s and other haircuts that urged the black community to embrace its natural hair structure remained fashionable throughout the decade. Throughout the decade, both sexes and other ethnic groups besides African Americans wore the afro. Other unisex hairstyle that both men and women loved was flicked back fringe. Heated styling equipment were used to make flicks and wings of various lengths. 
Throughout the 1970s, straight hair with a middle part, long curls and blunt bangs were other popular hairstyles. And I, I really like that look. I'm getting a fringe haircut in May, so I'm kind of growing out my bangs so I can get it restyled, which I'm excited to get like a full 1970s razor haircut. And now let's look at some 1970s fashion. The early 1970s saw a revival of the hippie aesthetic of the 1960s, bell bottom pants, frayed jeans, midi skirts, maxi dresses, tie-dye, peasant blouses, and ponchos were among the most popular fashions. Ladies who didn't go for the hippie look in the early 1970s frequently opted for a dressier or formal casual outfit. This outfit featured flared slacks, fitted wide lapel blazers, tight t-shirts or skirts, sweaters, cardigans, and boots. Popular pastel hues included baby blue, yellow, mauve, and peach. The hippie look was out of style for both men and women by the middle of the 70s, giving way to a more laid back everyday look. Tailored shirts with intricate graphics, catchphrases, and sports emblems became increasingly fashionable. The middle of the decade saw an increase in the number of women entering the workforce, which prompted the development of more tailored professional attire, such as fitted blouses, midi skirts, and tailored blazers. Last but not least, by the decade's close, disco had completely taken over fashion with looks like jersey wrap dresses, tube tops, sequined shirts, spandex shorts, and high slit skirts with boots and chunky heels. And now let's look into 1970s cosmetics. In the 1970s, Western cosmetics represented the various roles that modern women were expected to play. For the first time since 1900, makeup was selected based on the context rather than the accordance with established trends. The natural look during the daytime influenced by feminists and the sexualist nighttime aesthetic promoted by European designers and fashion photographers were the two main visions of the time. Punk and glam also had a small but notable influence with innovative marketing and production techniques the flattering cosmetic sector tried to recover. And the natural look, many feminists of the 1970s did not wear makeup despite the fact that some feminists did so. Susan Brown Miller, for example, dubbed a bear face the dignified new style of feminism. The cosmetics industry started to sell makeup as natural or invisible in response to the growing widespread rejection of sexual objectification. They would believe it's your own fresh, perfect skin claimed a 1970s moon drops demi makeup advertisement. Moreover, perfumes were promoted to the new lady. Within a year of its debut, Charlie, whose advertisements depicted a no-nonsense pantsuit clad independent woman, became the top selling fragrance in the country. Charlie was a marketing success. Working women felt increased pressure to display a perfect image in the corporate sector, which was viewed as fitting for serious, polite, and androgynous cosmetics. In other parts of the fashion industry, similar aesthetics might be seen. American fashion designers like Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein introduced subtle, natural styles with natural makeup in the 1970s when working together on the Cosmopolitan covers that popularized the 1970s natural look. Photographer Francesco Scalvulo, makeup artist Way Brandy, and hairstyles Mari Hobson adopted a similar style. According to Brandy's concept, which was outlined in his book, Creating your face, makeup should not be used as a mask, but rather to change perception and proportion in order to create a unique, ideal face. Glamorization. In stark contrast to the natural look, the makeup worn by European fashion designers in the 1970s offered a sensual appearance for ladies. Despite models in YSLs, immensely famous catwalk displays wore menswear and short slick back hair, their lips were shiny and brilliant red. Intense feminine colors were also used in YSL's cosmetics range. Women wore blood red lipstick, glossy red nail polish, pencil thin eyebrows, and black eye makeup in the violent sexual promo chic fashion photography of French and Italian Vogue. Ladies used this ideal of beauty for the evenings when they could try to entice men in the discos of the time. And the punk aesthetic. Instead of adopting the current trends, the punk movement that arose in the late 1970s 
she's tried to provoke. The style, which is called the anti-beauty, embraced body piercings, tattoos, and aggressively fake makeup to startle onlookers. The main aesthetic components were neo-tribalism, black, and fluorescence. The influence of another extreme aesthetic was formed by images of glam rockers like Alice Cooper, David Bowie, and Lou Reed in the pages of Rolling Stone. Androgyny, decadence, and camp are all prominent elements of the glam aesthetic, and it was a stark contrast to the innocence and sincerity of the 1960s. This time period saw a rise in popularity for glitter nail polish and eye makeup. In product developments of the 1970s, in the 1970s, women tended to use a lighter foundation which significantly expanded the market for skincare products. A growing importance was placed on anti-aging products. Blush with vibrant colors persisted until the early 1970s. 70s from the 1960s. Moreover, tube blush was quite well liked. Deep pink, purple, and raspberry were common shades of lip color in the 70s, as were glosses. The development of waterproof mascara, as well as superior lash lengtheners and thickeners, was made possible by chemistry advancements. In contrast to the iridescence that defined 1960s makeup, matte colors were fashionable for the eyes. Eyeshadow hues at the time reflected the decade's paradox of beauty ideals, both dramatic, smoky dark gray, and transparent, natural beiges and grays were in vogue. Moreover, new presentation and marketing techniques appeared. The custom of having a model as the contractually exclusive face of a specific corporation started when Revlon engaged Lauren Hutton to advertise their Ultima 2 line. Several businesses immediately embraced the tactic, noteworthy spokesmodels from the 1970s included Karen Graham for Chanel, Margot Hemingway for Babe, and Catherine de Neveu for Estee Lauder. At the point of purchase, cosmetics businesses also prioritized customer service and attractiveness. Clinique used spotless makeup stations staffed by staff wearing white coats to convey an image of scientific authority. In 1970s beauty innovations, Benefits Cosmetics, Benetent Lip and and cheek stain was launched in 1976 and you can still buy this today Benefit Cosmetics may currently be most known for its brow products and brow waxing services, but more than 40 years ago, their first product was the Benetint Lip and Cheek Stain. And this now famous Benetint was originally developed as a nipple dye for strippers in the neighborhood when the company was founded by identical twin sisters, Jane and Jean Ford in San Francisco's red light district. And I honestly am shocked by that one, how they wound up creating a Benefit Cosmetics that actually would be a good video to do a separate one. In order to make rouge that was effective in staining skin, simple to blend, and would last all night, the Ford sisters steamed rose petals in their kitchen, and then they created the blush. And the next product that was popular in the 70s was, and invented in the 70s, was Maybelline Great Lash Mascara, which was launched in 1971. And we all know that Maybelline's mascaras nearly never let us down, but did you know that Maybelline was one one of the earliest mascara manufacturers in the world. And if you want to learn more about Maybelline, check out my other Maybelline video. The company's founder and its sister, Mabel, invented mascara by combining Vaseline and coal dust to create a thick black concoction that was applied to Mabel's eyelashes to make them appear longer and fuller. The mixture was subsequently advertised and sold, eventually becoming the Maybelline brand, a combination of Mabel and Vaseline. And now let's talk about Farrah Foster, since she was kind of one of the most iconic icons from the 1970s. And when I do a quick like vision of like one person, when I think of the 70s, I think of Farrah Foster. The free-spirited style of the 1970s was embodied by Farrah Fawcett, whose cascading golden locks, bronze glow, and athletic brilliance were iconic. Because of the extreme demand for her thick, fluffy mane, stylists even enrolled in Farrah hair classes to learn how to create the trendy style. Before their screen debuts, old Hollywood movie stars frequently received opulent makeovers, but Farrah's innate beauty shone long before she entered the spotlight of Hollywood. Her mother said that when Farrah was a young child in Corpus Christi, Texas, people would stop her on the street and say that she looked like an angel.
angel. People would stop by Farrah's house as a youngster to admire her doll-like beauty, making her a local legend. Farrah, however, lacked vanity. Her hometown acquaintances characterized her as an attractive tomboy who shied away from the spotlight and was sporty. She preferred being in the open, hot, and in harmony with nature. When she was younger, Farrah loved playing tennis, swimming, riding horses, fishing, and hunting. For the course of her four years in high school, Farrah always received votes for the most beautiful girl, despite never trying to elicit attention or worrying about her beauty. The University of Texas Texas and Austin, she made history by being the first freshman to receive a top 10 beauty ranking. But according to her friends, Farrah's popularity was a result of her modesty and generosity as she treated everyone equally and spoke up for those who were bullied. Farrah never had any aspirations of becoming a Hollywood star, but destiny had other ideas. Her winning entry from the college competition ended up on the Hollywood desk of a publicist in Hollywood. He kept calling Farrah and convinced her to put off going to college and try her luck in California. She turned down his advances for more than a year before deciding to visit Hollywood in the summer before her junior year in an effort to earn some additional cash. Farrah, on the other hand, never went back to college since as soon as she landed, she started booking a continuous stream of work. And let's dive into her fitness routine. What is Farrah's secret to achieving her renowned beach body? A 20 minute cycle of 60 sit-ups, arm circles, and hip rolls was part of Farrah's daily fitness routine. Exercise was important to Farrah because it kept her grounded, sane, and energized in addition to helping her look nice. And she says, I always think that most people are engaged in some form of physical activity merely to exist in the environment since I made exercise a habit like brushing my teeth, she said. And Farrah claims it's not that difficult to understand the mysteries of her renowned feathery locks, despite people's effort to do so. She says, my hair seems to fall in the perfect position without me bothering to brush it while I ex execute those leg lifts she recently discovered. In contrast to being groomed and prepped in, on movie sets, Farrah likes sweaty afternoon beach dives. She claims that the beach sand is the ultimate dead skin cleaner and the key to her flawless skin. With sales of more than 20 million copies, the well-known poster of Farrah Fawcett posing in a red bathing suit became the all-time best-selling poster. Poster. Farrah handled her own hair and cosmetics for the shoot, so there wasn't a glam squad in the background of the photo. She rubbed lemon to her hair, the photographer recalled, to create subtle highlights. When Farrah was chosen to represent Faberge shampoo, she told the creators that she preferred having squeaky clean but not too squeaky hair and suggested that they use vinegar in the mixture to produce the light appearance. And the key to replicating Farrah's thick hair is getting the appropriate haircut. Layering Farrah's hair gave it a feathery appearance and a layer placement is crucial. And around her face, Farrah had shorter layers and the rest of her hair had layers that got longer and a wispier. Now let's talk about Farrah Fawcett's soft, glowing makeup. In the 1970s, minimal makeup reflected the free-spirited bronze beach babe aesthetic that was in vogue at the time. With her preference for dewy finishes, neutral eyes, sun-kissed complexion, and subtly colored lips, Farrah personified this carefree style. She focused on her forehead as she applied bronzer to the high areas of her face. On her cheeks, Farrah always wore a glossy peach sheen. Farrah used a variety of light blue, cream, gold, bronze, mauve, and gray eyeshadows across her lids while deciding on nude and brown tones above her eyelid crease. Farrah would begin by applying a lighter shade to the inner half of the crease and a darker shade to the outer corners. The inner corner of her bottom waterline was highlighted with a lighter hue, while the outer half was aligned with a smoky brown shadow. Even though Farrah frequently went without makeup outside, there was one one item she simply could not go without, lipstick. She preferred rosy nude lipstick with a clear gloss as her go-to lip color. Patrick Foley, Farrah's makeup artist, created a lipstick in her favorite hue and sold it to generate money for the Farrah Fawcett Foundation. And the lipstick is a Nude Envy lipstick. I ended up getting one a few years ago, but apparently it's sold out now and it's a really nice silky, sheer, kind of light pink shade and it looks exactly like the one Farrah Fawcett liked to wear and you could see it in all the pictures of her, her glossy lips. Farrah lived a seemingly idyllic life, but behind closed doors she experienced 
dark chapters. Farrah's tenacity in the face of difficulty served as a lighthouse for those who were in need. She urged others to look for silver linings because she wanted others to know they weren't alone. Every day is nice, but some days are better than others, she insisted. Following her departure from Charlie's Angel and amid expensive legal battles, Farrah was temporarily barred from participating in big Hollywood films. On a Valentine's Day, Farrah discovered her longtime partner, Ryan O'Neill, having an affair in their bed. She gently asked what her name was and walked away without even letting her anger show. Even though she subsequently reconciled, their son once threatened to stab himself if they didn't stop bickering. Childhood trauma led to a tumultuous adult life that culminated in a prison sentence that he would serve as Farrah battled cancer. Farrah found out her cancer had spread four months after she was told she was cancer free. She was motivated to battle the illness and was filled with optimism, but according to her close friends, she never once asked, why me? The resilient, upbeat spirit was personified by Farrah right up to the end. And Farrah said, I never lost hope and it never occurred to me to quit fighting, not once, even in the face of tremendous suffering and uncertainty. Farrah Fawcett was an icon of beauty in the 1970s and beloved by millions. Women across the world wanted to recreate Farrah's iconic hairstyle and effortless glamour. Her influence extended to beauty secrets. Many women tried out Farrah's approved trends, whether that be her flipped out hair, lip gloss, or feather earrings. Farrah stands tall as a reminder of all that made the 1970s so amazing. It was an influential time when it came to personal style and grooming. A true icon, Farrah reminds us what it means to be confident, stylish, and completely one of a kind. Even the lingering effects of the 1960s social turmoil and economic woes in the 1970s were nevertheless a cool decade that many people look back on with nostalgia. When I think of the 1970s, I picture gorgeous haircuts, outrageously imaginative cosmetics, glowy faces, tanned athletic bodies, amazing music combined with fresh and daring fashions that truly reflected the way people lived in that era. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of my other vintage beauty videos.